It's time to sit back and check out the RCWR show with Lee Sanders. Get fun, in-depth coverage and analysis from the latest in professional wrestling in AEW, WWE, NWA, Impact Wrestling, or the world of entertainment. From hit TV shows to your favorite sports like the NBA or NFL, all things music, movies, and beyond while trying to make sense of this crazy world we live in. All while keeping it honest, insightful, and interactive since 2011. And now your host, live from the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., Lee Sanders. What is up, good kind people? Night one of WrestleMania 40 is now in the books. As we are just a few minutes removed from all of the festivities. What is going on? I am, as always, Lee Sanders. Thank you guys so much for checking out this WrestleMania 40 post-show edition of the RCWR show for this April 6, 2020. 24 oh man we just keep on rolling let me know what you guys had thought about tonight's wrestlemania night one shout out if you got x formerly known as twitter if you don't you can definitely sound off let your voice be heard over on the youtube channel youtube.com forward slash the rcwr show i do have a poll up on both platform so feel free to sound off let your voices be heard shout out to our youtube community Go on YouTube.com forward slash the RCWR show. Click on the Communities tab, and you'll be able to see the poll that way and vote. I'll see what you all have to say later on in the show. But definitely, one, come one, come all. Share your thoughts about tonight's premium live event. Again, WrestleMania 40, night one, is now in the books. And, man, the way things ended tonight, I I know we're going out of order, but you just got to go with those immediate reactions right you're looking at what transpired there with cody rhodes and if you're a big fan of eagles the band you're looking at that going man there definitely was a heartache tonight and then mixed in with a little bit of Dion warwick's deja vu you're going man what the hell especially when cody rhodes was hitting that pose once again where he's just sitting on his keisha and he's just kind of nodding you know to the left to the right like i can't believe this happened again that's the look that he has on his face it's like finish the damn story brother finish the damn story yo again we're going out of context but it's all good right the rock can we all just admit those of us that have watched this premium live event can we all Just settle the dust and and, and all of that. There's been times in The Rock's career. I'm not talking about when he was doing the thing in WWE wrestling full-time or part-time. I'm talking about specifically after he pretty much was done with WWE. And he was just showing up every couple of years. Oh, wow, Rock's doing a match. Like, oh, oh, okay, great. He was at his absolute best In this one, I know he had talked a little bit about his training process in a recent interview and all that, which I highly recommend you go, you guys go out of your way, look it up and everything, read some of the highlights and all that. But this man showed up more determined than ever. And I got to tell you guys, I was thinking because The Rock has so many hats, right? His involvement with the XFL, UFL being a Hollywood star and his production company and Lord knows because I haven't even looked up his IMDb page. I don't even know what stuff he might be filming that's in production right now as we speak. Right. But I'm just thinking about his workload and I'm going, 
yeah, as far as this match goes, he's probably going to do the bare minimum. I'm not even expecting this guy to leave his feet. Forget about it. He's going to be doing nothing but pure offense. And I tell you what, when the main event tag match first started, it seemed to be the case. But then as we went deeper into it, oh, Rock was bumping like a mofo. But then you go, okay, he's willing to take a bump. Okay, betcha that's the last time we're going to see him leave his feet tonight. No, 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 no. He left his feet again and again and again where it mattered most. It was very smart how it was all laid out, this match. Even the spot that went down over the announcer's table, I'm looking at that spot between him and Cody Rhodes going, yeah, dog, there's no way. There's no way that Rock is going to go through the announcer's table or any table for that matter. Like, yeah, we can feel And then sure enough, it gets reversed. Rock goes through the damn announcer's table and you're just going, okay, Rock is all in. It is all about telling a fantastic story, entertaining the crowd here. Okay, that's what's up. And just as the night progressed for this main event match, you just couldn't help if you're a Rock fan going, Yo, he's really bringing it tonight. I know that used to be one of his old catchphrases, but he really was, no pun intended, he really was bringing it tonight. I'm just picturing some of those production companies that might be lined up, assuming he's filming something, and they're just going, what the hell is he doing? No, no, like, he didn't say he was going to do that, right? And at that point, you're just hoping that, okay, he walks away, He's not injured. It's not going to be a case where production is set back by a couple of weeks. Because remember, especially to our newer listeners out there, um, remember a few years ago, maybe it was the last match that The Rock did. There was a match where he actually injured himself. And as a result of that production, I can't remember what was being filmed at the time, but production was held off for a few weeks. And that's a big deal in Hollywood. Not to bore you guys, but in a nutshell, when your top star is injured and production comes to a halt, I mean, that's that's thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars that essentially is down the tube and all that because you already are on a tight budget. So when you have stuff like that go down, ooh, it's not good whatsoever. So keep your fingers crossed. Hope that everything went okay for The Rock and that he's, if anything, tomorrow he's just sore, but he's good. But, yo, I mean, my guy, for how old is this guy now? What is he, 51, 52, 53? Dude came into that joint. I got to say, he threw me off because I'm seeing the vest and I'm seeing the slack pants and I'm saying to my wife, yo, there's no way he's going to wrestle like that. Come on now. Like, you trying to tell me Rock been skipping leg day? Like, I know my man ain't been skipping leg day because back in the day, I used to stay checking out some of his social media posts and seeing how he be working out and all that. And I know he cares just as much about the lower body as he does the upper body. I'm going, I oh, ain't no way in hell he's going to be wearing slacks for this match. Hell no. And it took a little time after we got done with the entrances and, and everything. We finally see that The Rock is in his trademark trunks, boots, and elbow pads. And it's like, ah, all is right in the world. Yay. But now, you know, great tag match by everybody. And it's interesting because I didn't get a chance to offer predictions for night one and two. I had an idea where I wanted for things to go. And I would say for the most part, everything went down exactly how I pictured it to be, at least for night one. I'm still on the fence about night two. Expanding on that thought a little further, I toyed with the idea of, is somebody going to betray the other person in this main event tag match? That was the million dollar question that was burning in my mind. And at the same time, how it would all make sense for that betrayal to go down would it be the result of a miscommunication or would it just be ah well it turns out this person had ulterior motives 
And we'll probably know a little bit more maybe by night two or the next batch of WWE TV shows or whatnot. But there was no betrayal that went down in this. If you would have told me this was going to go down clean as far as, hey, is anybody going to stab the other person in the back? No, it's just going to be a straight up tag match. There'll be some shenanigans going down. And, And by the way, the touch of the rock bullying the referee and telling him, nah, man, nah, f- that you ain't doing no count out. Nah, 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 nah. You ain't stopping this f- match for nothing, okay? <laughs> you stop the f- match. <laughs> Your ass is fired. Like, I like that rock showing up and pretty much abusing his power. I loved it because, remember, This guy is now part of the TKO board, right? And with all of that absolute power, one can easily be, you know, take it a a bit to the head, right? Uh, Take it to the extreme, right? So I loved seeing that that played out extremely well. And for those that might be upset over the way things have played out, look at it from this standpoint. Because now, this makes things very interesting going into night two of WrestleMania. Which is this. Cody Rhodes now has to go into a bloodline rules match. Right? Anything possibly can and will happen. Especially when you incorporate the bloodline interference. Right? Any and everything is going to happen. Okay, so Cody Rhodes now knows, oh man, man, the stakes are even more not in my favor here, right? The odds that's going against me going in the night too, it does not look good whatsoever. But, 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 it's safe to say that now that Cody Rhodes, if you're following this storyline, it's safe to believe that Cody is most likely going to make a couple of phone calls and be like, hey, yo, man, I'm getting ready to do this bloodline rules joint. Odds going to be stacked against me. I could use some help. You got my back. Right now, I'm not saying I'm buying into the reports about John Cena Stone Cold Steve Austin, and maybe they're going to have some type of in- involvement. Hulk Hogan, right? I'm not saying I'm buying into that, but if you were to tell me that, yo, Jimmy Uso, Sami Zayn, like, if you were to tell me those two names off the break, maybe some other people that have had past affiliation with the bloodline and all that, maybe they might get involved on this second night of WrestleMania, try to help ensure that, nah, 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 Cody is going to freaking win, right? But then the other thing that you have to think about as well is, and see, here's the beautiful part. Here's the beautiful part about all this. What we saw transpire tonight with The Rock abusing his power, is that potentially a taste of things to come for night two? Meaning, is it potentially going to go down? Is it possible that The Rock may try to pull his weight, right? Use his authority and make sure that Roman Reigns comes out of night two, still the Universal Heavyweight Champion, or was tonight it? Like, that's it for The Rock. We're not going to see him again, right? And, and if The Rock were to show up tomorrow night, how do you negate the abuse of authority that he displayed Tonight, does Triple H do something or potentially does Stone Cold Steve Austin, longtime nemesis, right? A longtime rival of The Rock. Does he maybe do something? I can't wait to see how this all plays out because there's a whole lot of moving parts that's going to be going into night two. So for those of you that might have been a little bit sour seeing how things had transpired at the end with this tag match. I know a lot of you guys were probably like, no, 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 Cody. And there's still night two. 
you guys are most likely still going to have your cake and be able to eat it too at the end of the night. Mark my words on it. If you've been checking out this show since last year's WrestleMania, you remember what I said to you guys that were so disappointed that Cody Rhodes did not win the championship. I said, yo, it's okay. What WWE is doing right now, they are taking a long route. They're taking the scenic route rather than just go directly to that destination of crowning Cody Rhodes as the new champion. Now, they're taking you on this journey. And I said to you guys a year ago, mark my word. Don't believe me. Go back. Check out the WrestleMania post show. Just type in WrestleMania 39 RCWR show. You'll hear me in my words if you don't believe me. I said, yo, enjoy the ride for what it's worth. Next year, Cody will be champion. Guarantee it, right? So I'm liking how all of this is playing out. A whole lot of interesting moving parts going on in here, man. I, I'm telling you. I did not see any of the pre-show action. So the actual card is pretty much it. But uh, you know what? I did see the tail end. And shout out to CM Punk, Biggie, joining Bad News Barrett. I can't remember who else was there, but particularly Biggie, CM Punk. I thought they did a phenomenal job as part of the pre show panel. Uh, I'm hoping that they will run it back tomorrow. You know, one thing that was pretty hilarious about WrestleMania 40 tonight, we had the weather update from Michael Cole pretty much every match letting us know how cold and frigid and all this other stuff. And it's 51 freaking degrees. And I'm going, my God, my dude, my dude, you are a freaking b man. Like, seriously. <laughs> I'm like, let, look, let me tell you something. Over here in the nation's capital of Washington, D.C., all right, today it was 51 degrees. And with the wind chills, it... Real temperature-wise, it, it, it felt as though it was maybe 46, 47 degrees, right? But the actual temperature, it, it's 51. But the wind chills, it felt like 46, 47 degrees. I'm getting ready to go to work, and I go, you know, I let my dogs out, and I, you know, I come outside. I'm in my robe and all that, and I'm like, hmm, okay. This feels like a long sleeve, turtleneck kind of day. Okay, cool, right? Don't need no thermos and all that, but it feels like a long sleeve turtleneck. Maybe I'll grab a sweater and, you know, zip up sweater and I'm good to go, right? I'm good for the day. And that's exactly what I wore on my way to work. And I was fine. I felt great all day long. And I was outside for a good minute. Matter of fact, the day before, same temperature and everything. I was outside for about a half hour and I got this really cool device that the family had got for me so I could take care of filling up my air tires any place, you know, without, oh, where's a gas station? Where's a gas station? Where's a gas station? And I was fine wearing just a turtleneck, long sleeves, zip up sweater. Michael Cole, every single goddamn match. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, oh well, you know, oh, we're wearing gloves. We're wearing, we're wearing hats and we're not really sure what Pat McAfee's wearing, but and I'm just going, my God, my dudes, you would not last a minute in Chicago. Uh, you know, and, and my God, you complaining about what's going on in Philly. Oh, you ain't seen nothing. That is nothing compared to when Philly. I've been out there to Philly a couple of times. And that weather, let me tell you something. You talk to Philadelphia residents. They will tell you, you know what, I'll take the 51 degree temperature any day of the week versus we got snow coming because, man, you talk about real wind chills. Hell, not even snow, but just, hey, wintertime. It's here. We're in the start of it. We're in the middle of it, right, the thick of it all. And you want to talk about really cold, frigid freaking temperatures? Do some research. I remember there was an NFL game several weeks back, or maybe it was a college football game. No, no. It was an NFL game. And you had people that were out there that actually got frostbit 
on their fingertips and their toes, and the mofos had to be amputated, right? I'm sure they did not like that, okay? So, yeah, I, I mean, every single match, Michael Cole, weather update, complaining, it was ridiculous, man. I, I'm just looking at that going, are you telling me none of these guys looked at the local news in their hotel room before they went to bed and said, oh, man, okay, need to make sure I double up. Need to make sure I put on a white T-shirt up under my, my dress clothes or, right? I mean, the men and women, understand something, for the record, it wasn't the men and women wrestling for our enjoyment tonight that was complaining about the weather. It was Michael Cole and the gang, the commentators, that were complaining about the weather. It's like, you're telling me before you went to bed, you you didn't look at the weather? You, you didn't think to? I, I just found that hilarious. And at the same time, take a drink every single time Michael Cole mentions the weather. <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous. I'm picturing my man, Matthew from Botchamania. He's going to have a field day. Uh, with that stuff. I'm telling you, he's going to have a field day with that. All right, let's jump through this card. I hope you guys appreciate the side chatter. Yickety, yackety, yak, because we only got six matches uh, to really talk about. I'll offer a few more thoughts on the main event match between The Rock, Roman Reigns taking on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. First match of the night. Women's World Championship, Rhea Ripley defending the championship against Becky Lynch. I thought that as far as in-ring attires go, first place goes to Becky Lynch. I thought her attire was really, really badass. I uh, definitely want to give an honorable mention to Seth Rollins. It was a very extravagant costume that he wore. Uh, so top nods goes to those cats for the night as far as best costumes feel free to sound off let me know what you thought was really cool costume of the night Rhea Ripley defeating Becky Lynch with the Riptide to retain her championship uh coming in at about a little over 17 minutes yo this was good first off they did this right as far as Rhea Ripley retaining the championship. I wasn't so convinced that Becky Lynch was going to dethrone Rhea Ripley. I, I just did not. I, I, I didn't feel that. I don't know if you guys felt the same vibe. Hell, maybe some of you guys were actually rooting for her uh, to actually win, but I, I, I just, I felt that the way everything was booked, the size, the matchup, all of that stuff, my whole thing was, nah, man, you know what? This should be Rhea Ripley all the way. So I'm happy that Rhea Ripley went into a WrestleMania with her women's championship and came out successfully defending the championship at WrestleMania. And then Becky Lynch got something scratched off of her respected bucket list because she always wanted to open up a WrestleMania. Well, she got that and everything. So it's, it's kind of interesting where we are here. Let's talk about Becky Lynch for a minute. I've seen some of the chatter that's been happening on social media. Although Becky Lynch has had some pretty good matchups here and there, some people feel that something is a little bit off with Becky Lynch, something's been kind of lacking way, way before she gave birth to her beautiful daughter and all that. Everybody's been saying, hey, she's not quite the same, not quite the believable, the man character that we've all come to know and appreciate and everything. Well, I tell you what, after the performance that she had tonight against Rhea Ripley. If you were to tell me that Becky Lynch did the match that she did tonight with a 104 degree fever and on top of that she was dealing with strep throat, I would say, "Yo, and she still had the balls to go out there and do that match against Rhea Ripley?" Oh, no, you know what? Mad respect. That just makes me respect her even more. Uh, especially as far as her dedication to the sport, to entertaining the fans. Mad, mad respect. It makes me appreciate her and her work even more. 
as a fan. So kudos to Becky because she would have been well within her right to go, you know what, I I just can't. I'm trying, but I, I, I can't do it. And look, we all know when we go to these wrestling events, the card, hey, subject to change. We deal with that all the time, right? So mad respect. I wouldn't be surprised, though, if maybe Becky Lynch takes a few weeks off, maybe a month or two, all in the name of touring, you know, with this book that just came out, her autobiography. I'm looking forward to picking up a copy. I still haven't decided if I'm going to go with a physical copy or if I'm going to go with a digital copy and I can just pick it up via my iPad or whatever. I'm probably going to go with a physical copy because there's just that part of me that likes, you know, from time to time, let me go read that again. And, and you hate to be in a position where, especially in this day and age, digital media and all that, you can't always rely on digital media because there could be some weird dispute thing going on. And the next thing you know, that content digitally, it's not available anymore. Oh man, well, I don't have a physical. Well, you're screwed, right? But, uh, mad respect to Becky Lynch. On all cylinders. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this match. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. A lot more than the first encounter that she had with Rhea Ripley. Now, let's flip the script. Let's talk about Rhea Ripley a little bit here. Mommy. Look, Mommy's been on a roll. I love the continuing dominance. This stranglehold that she has on the women's division and everything. But here's the biggest challenge for WWE right now, which is this. We got to build up some legit contenders for Rhea Ripley. Sincerely, because she pretty much has beaten all of them. She's beaten every single body that pretty much has been put in front of her. She's knocked them all down. And at this point, she's just dangling in the wind there. You know, there's really nobody. That's why I kind of feel in regards to Jade Cargill going over there to SmackDown. That's why I kind of feel, ah, on the one hand, it's great that she's on SmackDown, but then on the other hand, Raw really could have used her help a little bit, especially if you wanted to start Jade Cargill off uh, on the Raw brand getting a couple of W's under her belt, maybe have her take on some enhancement talents, then eventually work her way up to Natty, Candice LeRae, Andy Hartwell, you know, the usual suspects, right? Maxine Dupree, build her up that way so that inevitably Cargill would cross paths with uh, Rhea Ripley. But, you know, the way this is looking right now, I'm curious to see what's going to happen here because, as we all know, usually a few weeks after WrestleMania, we get some type of announcement of an upcoming draft and all that. So I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. But WWE has their hands full in continuing to make things be exciting for this reign we've been experiencing thus far of Rhea Ripley because it, it, it's pretty much, I, I mean, let's be honest, I'm a big Rhea Ripley fan myself, but I'll definitely keep it real with you guys. It's been a bit yawn so to speak. So we got to shake it up. We got to make things be interesting. I'm most curious to see where things are as far as the next chapter. Maybe the next chapter part of it involves Judgment Day breaking up. I think we'll definitely have a better idea about that uh, when we get to uh, tomorrow night and going into Monday Night Raw and everything. But those are my thoughts uh, in regards to both of those girls. Again, great match that the two of them had. From there, we go to our six-pack tag team ladder match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team Championship. Judgment Day defending against DIY, The Awesome Truth, New Day, A-Town Down Under, and The New Catch Republic. Why is it every time I hear The New Catch Republic, it sounds like a, a, a clothing store? What's the clothing store that we all used to mess with back in the day? Was it called Banana Republic? Is that it? Maybe I might have it wrong. Forgive me if I do, but I, I know it ended in Republic. It just has that kind of clothing vibe to it, though. So we got two new tag teams 
two new tag teams as A Town Down Under won the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, while Awesome Truth won the Raw Tag Team Championships. They have both of these titles uh, hanging on these little uh, hook joints up on the ceiling, and you had to take two separate ladders to climb up and get them and everything. So it's kind of interesting how, because I wasn't sure what was going on with this match at first. You know, originally I thought, oh, okay, so one team wins it all. And then the more and more I was listening to Michael Cole, it's like, oh, okay, so basically, you know, they're both up for grabs. Like anything can go. It could be a sweep or it could, meaning one team could take both championships or, it could end the way that I just described. As far as A Town down under becoming the SmackDown Tag Champions, ah, uh, it may bother some people. I don't personally care. I, I, you know, me personally, I don't care. Uh, Theory, I think he has a bright career ahead of him, as well as Grayson Waller. Right, they haven't even hit their peaks, respective peaks yet. Uh, I know a lot of people find them entertaining and all that. For me personally, they have their moments, but as far as them being the SmackDown Tag Champions, it, it doesn't bother me none. Look, if you can have these guys go out there, heal it up, and they've been doing a good job healing it up every single week from some of the segments that I've been seeing on SmackDown and all that, they're going to be a really good set of chicken sh- champions making the baby faces chase after them. And as I always like to say here on the show, the chase is better than the catch. For me personally, the chase is better than the catch. So I- I'm okay with that. Awesome Truth winning the Raw Tag Champions. Yo, totally down with that. You know, look, true story. And I remember when I was on air way back in the day when Awesome Truth was still running around. My God, that is funny. That is funny. <laughs> I've been on air. Wow. Man, I've been on air a long time. Anyway, no, um, I remember Awesome Truth from way back when, and I just felt that they ended way too damn soon. I thought there was so much you could do with them, especially from a marketing, merchandise standpoint and all that. I thought there was a whole bunch of cool stuff you could do with them. So the fact that Awesome Truth won the Raw Tag titles... I'm happy. I'm mainly happy for our truth. I mean, Miz has pretty much done it all in his respected career, right? But I'm more so excited for our truth, which he made history tonight. This was as long as he's been tenured in the company. This was the first time in WrestleMania history that our truth believe that. That is just bonkers when you hear that, right? But, I mean, the man continues to defy father time. He continues to go out there and somehow is able to stay being relevant. He somehow is able to constantly adapt with the times, fit in whatever respected angle that's going on. It's just, he's a genius. He really is a genius, a comedic genius at that, and very great at timing. Uh, So for him to be in this position now where he's co-raw tag champions, hey, why not? Couldn't happen to a greater guy. I know I definitely am not the only one uh, that uh, shares those sentiments. So, you know, I'm I'm okay with the two set of tag teams that came out uh, of that match. Decent tag match for the most part. Um yeah, yeah, decent. Yeah, it was decent for what it was worth, right? Kind of felt like to a degree you were maybe watching a a SmackDown main event, so to speak, right? Something from SmackDown. That's not a diss, but you get the vibe that I'm talking about. Hey, you guys that's tuning in right now, appreciate you guys. Lee Sanders here. You're checking out the RCWR show. It's our WrestleMania 40 Night 1 post show. Uh, if you guys been enjoying yourself so far, do me a huge favor, especially if you're checking this out via YouTube. Hit the like button. Hell, if you're watching on another platform right now, just hop on over to the YouTube channel and just hit the like button. Because when you do that, it helps put more eyeballs on the content and it supercharges it so that it can 
be spread out there to a more wider audience for others to discover. Do that. Thank you so much in advance. Appreciate you guys. Next matchup, Rey Mysterio and Andrade taking on Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Sidebar, how many of you guys have been enjoying the new game modes in WWE Supercard all while you're trying to do the treasure hunt for that limited edition Bianca Belair card. Uh, There's this one game mode, I think it's called, uh, it's not block party, I think it's called invites only. And you're basically, you, 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 you can win like really cool stuff. There's like six, six rounds basically. But when you hit a strike, Dominic Mysterio pops up. It's kind of funny. And then in the other game mode, which is the scavenger hunt, like you won't always get a puzzle piece. You basically got to collect 16 puzzle pieces. And when, when you're done collecting them all, you get yourself a Bianca Belair limited edition uh, WrestleMania 40 tier card. The stats are through the roof. I've seen the stats. It's pretty damn good when you get it up to level 100. But anyway, there's times during that mode where you think you've won a puzzle piece and Dominic Mysterio runs off with it. It's as annoying because it happens a lot. It's all RNG, right? It's all RNG based. But it's so funny because it almost reminds you of the dog from the Duck Hunt games back in the day for Nintendo. It's hilarious. Check it out or look it up online. Get an idea what I'm talking about. Some hilarious stuff there. Uh, Nice tag match uh, between all the uh, parties here. Rey Mysterio defeating Santos Escobar with a top uh, dive uh, splash. 10 minutes and some change. Had got a little bit of help. Uh, at the tail end of this match, it was Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey that had came in and uh, beat the holy crap there out of Dominic Mysterio when he was trying to do some stuff outside the ring, tossing him uh, back in there and pretty much having Rey Mysterio connect with a double 619 on Dom and Escobar picking up the win and all that. And the way Kelsey and Lane went in there, and, and by the way, because I know not a lot of people are are uh, into the football and, and everything like that, but Jason Kelsey particularly, that dude, I'm going to give him his flowers. I'm going to give him his props. That dude is charismatic. He's funny. Right? I mean, that guy, listen to his podcast. Uh, I know, now, does he do a podcast with his brother? I'm trying to, because I've only seen a couple of clips here and there, not in anticipation of what went down tonight, just, you know, I didn't have anything to do, and it was like, oh, what's what's this about? I'm browsing on social media. Uh, He definitely has a career ahead of him, uh, whatever he decides he wants to do. I know that there are a lot of media outlets that's trying to get a hold of him, to be some type of a color commentator, uh, you know, once he's done with football and all that. I don't know if he's done now. I, I don't follow him like that, that, but I know enough to know that there is great interest in acquiring his services. Uh, so whatever he decides to do, I, I think he's going to thrive. I think he's going to do very well and not for nothing, but with some of the stuff that he was doing in there and I'll give Lane Johnson his props as well for some of the stuff that they were doing, uh, there, they seemed as though, you know what, if you were to maybe have them be a tag team or maybe put one of them in a match against somebody. Yeah. You know what? They would hold themselves up pretty good especially Kelsey especially Kelsey more so Kelsey uh than Johnson that's just my personal opinion though but nice fun uh tag match that went down uh right here you know it's kind of interesting because I know a lot of people were expecting for Carlito to maybe be a little bit butt hurt because of what all had went down on Smackdown when he had to find out the hard way that oh Andrade is going to be Rey Mysterio's partner and Carlito just kind of had this facial expression like, well, yeah, uh, I guess that's cool. Yeah, 
right? It was kind of one of those type of deals. <laughs> but, you know, no betrayal from Carlito. There's a few things that went down here tonight where you're looking and you're going, okay, surely there's going to be some backstabbing going on here. Yes and no. No. Big fat no. Nothing was going on there. Um, but, yeah, Kelsey. Kelsey, you know, he's he's growing on me, man. Them Kelsey brothers, they both are really, really uh, growing on me. It was a good match. Crowd, here's the thing, though. The crowd was mostly dead for this. And I just couldn't help but figure out for the love of me what was going on with that Philly crowd. Because I'm looking at them. I'm going, man, did they have some leftovers from the Hall of Fame ceremony? Which, by the way, shout out to those of you that were around for our Hall of Fame ceremony post-show. And, uh, <laughs> boy, that was just, that was wild. If you guys didn't check out the Hall of Fame ceremony yet, you definitely, after you get done listening to this, watching this, uh, go check out the Hall of Fame post-show that I did. And uh, you'll get the full one on everything if you haven't heard by now. Uh, it was just crazy, though. It, it, it was crazy, though. But no, man, um, this match was good for what it was worth. But the crowd was just so dead. And I, I just couldn't help but think about the crowd throughout night one. And it seemed like they mostly were dead until we got to the main event match. And I just, are you not entertained? What's going on with you guys? Like, seriously, are you not entertained? You know, are we dealing with some leftover itis or, or, or whatever from... Last night's Hall of Fame ceremony, you know, like, I don't know what was going on. Now, some people came to the defense of the Philly crowd and said, well, you know, it's like technically a outdoor arena, so to speak. So, you know, the sound's going to be kind of lost a little bit. Like, um, one, I'm going, is it really an outdoor arena? Maybe you mean it's just so roomy that, Right. But if it is an outdoor arena, it's like, OK, that kind of makes a little bit of sense, I guess. I, I don't really know. But nah, man, I've seen whether it was an outdoor crowd or oh, the stadium is just that spacious. Yet we've got all these seats filled up, which, by the way, WWE had hit a sold out, another sold out show. Uh, they had 72,000, give me a second and I'll find it for you guys. Cause I actually jotted it down in the notes. 72,543 were in attendance for this night one WrestleMania event. That is just freaking great to hear. Great freaking numbers, man. Uh, let's see from there. Jay Uso taking on Jimmy Uso. Man, they messed up right here, man. So first off, they brought out Lil Wayne to perform Jay's. Uh, well, no, he you yeah, know he did perform Jay's entrance. He came out there and he was singing some weird song. Look, I love rap. I love my hip hop as much as the next person. My wife will tell you I I stay pushing my rap in in hip hop. Okay. I've been pushing out a lot more than I have with my rock and metal. Cause I'm also a rock and metal head, but I, I'm, I'm mainly these days. I've just been doing my rap, my hip hop. Okay. And Lil Wayne coming out there. Keep in mind, Samantha Irvin, who did a phenomenal job doing all the announcement introductions for night one. She's supposed to do it again for night two. Rest that voice up, hon. Plenty of tea. Rest that throat. If you can put a nice little warm towel around it, do that. But drink plenty of tea and honey. The ginger, all that stuff, it freaking helps. Try to talk as little as possible. Talk in whispers until you got to do the actual thing. But she introduces Lil Wayne by saying he is the greatest rapper alive. And I'm going... Bullshit. I ain't, I ain't censoring myself for that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going, wait a minute. Greatest rapper of all time. 
And I'm just picturing 50 Cent. Uh, I'm picturing Eminem. I'm picturing Ice T. I'm picturing Cypress Hill. I'm picturing Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, <laughs> Kumo D, LL Cool J, Tribe Call Quest, Q Tip, Fife Dog. <laughs> I'm like, go, Alicia, he Hobbit, Jay Z. I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, pop the damn brakes. There's like 50 freaking heads that I can think of. That are way ahead of Lil Wayne, Cardi B, Lil Kim. I mean, I'm just like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Greatest rapper of all time. And I'm just picturing Skip Bayless. How about my man, Lil Wayne? Right? Because we know Skip Bayless, he's got a hard on for Lil Wayne. Especially ever since that he, he dumped Shannon Sharp. Right. And I'm glad Shannon's doing bigger and better things. Right. Meanwhile, undisputed, like it is just tanking. If you were to tell me in a couple of days, yo, that joint got canceled. I'd be like, I'm not surprised. Right. I mean, it's really, really bad. I mean, they're lucky if they can average like 50,000 viewers now. But anyway, I'm just picturing Skip Bayless. Right. Because now his his new black crush is Lil Wayne. Right. I'm just picturing him. How about my man, Lil Wayne? At WrestleMania, I don't care for wrestling, but I love me some Lil Wayne, right? I'm just picturing that, dude. And you get this great introduction. Lil Wayne comes out there, and he's just... I, I'm watching this with my wife, and, and she's like, what? What what the f*** is he, is he rapping about? What's he saying? I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I'm like... This ain't rap, though. Like, this this ain't even talent. Like, I don't know what the hell is, this is. He's coming out there, and he's just going, and Like, what do you... I'm, that's not me mocking, like, uh, you know, a foreign person. That's literally how Lil Wayne sounds while he's out there. It was the most atrocious thing that I ever heard in my life. And then when it came time for the Jay Uso song, he butchered the hell out of uh, the, the entrance for Jay Uso's little theme song, he butchered the hell out of it. It was just, please, just, dude, shut up. Seriously, just shut up, dude. Right? Now, if you want to say Lil Wayne makes really good beats, yo, I'm not going to even argue with you. I would say, yeah, as far as beats go, Lil Wayne has damn good beats. But greatest rapper? Oh, nah, man, you can miss me with that. You can miss me with that. No, Pee Wee Herman. Nah, that's that's too cruel. That's too cruel. I can't do him like that. I can't do Lil Wayne like that. But anyway, there's a match between the brothers. Now we got all that joking out the way. This match between the brothers. Jay Uso. Actually, you know what? Was it Jay? I'm trying to think if it was Jay. Because see, now, you know, my wife jinxed me because she was like, she was like, oh, uh, that's Jimmy, ain't it? I'm like, dude, like you messing me up. Like you don't, don't mess me up. But no, <laughs> Jay, Jay Uso picked up the win here. Uh, towards the end of the match, he drilled Jimmy with a spear, one with a splash, a little bit after the 11 minute mark. Ah, uh, kind of a dull match. I got to be honest with you guys. And it's so sad because we had a really great video package for brother versus brother. And you had this whole, I am not my brother's keeper. Really great. I, I love the overall presentation uh, of this video package, basically telling the story of the brothers, how we got to this point and all of that. But, you know, the match itself, oh. Uh, I wasn't really a fan of this. Yeah, I, I didn't. And I appreciate WWE. Here's why I'm a little bit conflicted. I appreciate WWE trying to build this up in such a way where they go, hey, this is the third time in history that it's brother versus brother. So you're going, okay, I remember Owen versus Brett. Do y'all remember the other one? I know what it is, but I, I, I'm just curious. Do you all know what the other one was? Sound off 
let me know. You can post it in the chat. It's okay. And if somebody else goes, yeah, that's the one I was thinking, I'll take you at your word for it at face value. But anyway, this felt so hollow. I don't know, maybe for me, because it just felt so forced. It felt so kind of rushed. I know leading up to this match, we had a couple of times there where the brothers were sharing a talking segment, and I just kind of, look, if you're going to have the Uso brothers out there with microphones and they're talking longer than five minutes, that's not good. That's actually a detriment to them, right? Let them go out there and pretty much do, you know, what, what they need to do best, right? I mean, on the one hand, you can look at this moment, and if you're a Usos fan, not only can you appreciate how far they've come along, especially from their tag team days. I mean, you know, you just go, man, I can't believe that was so long ago and everything, right? But they truly are. I like where they are as individuals, without a shadow of doubt. And the fact that these two were able to have a WrestleMania moment against each other, you know, like, that's cool, but... When you get right down to the heart of the matter, it was rather dull. We really didn't need to see this uh, for what it was worth. I don't think the answer is keep having these guys face one another. If anything, my whole mentality is, okay, now that you have done a really good job carving out the personalities of both of these men, let them continue to embark on the respected singles career paths that they have embarked on. I think they are, are, are better fighting other people as opposed to fighting each other. I love the silly role that Jimmy is in. Let him continue to stay uh, in that role and everything. Jay Uso, the sky is definitely the limit, man. I, I mean, you can go to some really cool, badass places with him. But the answer, as far as well, let's keep having these two feud against one another, no. Like, after this, just, just let it be. Just let it be. Just let it be. Next up, Asuka, Dakota Kai, Kari Sane taking on Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, and Naomi. You know, honorable mention to Damage Control. They had a pretty cool entrance as well. Kind of was digging the attires uh, that they were wearing as well. Uh, good six-woman tag team match that really, as far as where the eyeballs needed to be, Jade Cargill. Jade cut her hair, apparently. Uh, unless she just decided to style it differently, it looks as though she cut the hair. I was a little... A little disappointed in that. I was actually saying out loud, oh man, she cut the hair. I don't like the short hair. And and my wife, who's always a fan of short hair, every chance she gets, she likes pushing short hair. She's like, no, I like it. I, I like the short hair. It looks good on her. I'm like, yeah, you know. I'm a sucker. I like long hair. If it can come down to the shoulders, I like, I just like being able to play with a woman's hair, you know, just, I like wrapping it around my finger and all that and, don't pay me no mind. But anyway, just, no, Jade, though, she did great. She did great in this. My eyes was mainly on her. And what I saw of her was, uh, I summed this up really well on social media, too. What I saw from her in the ring, better fluid. I mean, she moved more solid, more competent. OK, uh, I mean, she everything that was expected of her to do, she hit it. There was no botching. There was no sloppiness to it. No carelessness afterwards. Right. Like, oops. What, what, oh, well, just gotta keep going. Right. There was none of that silly crap that was going on. She did great in this WrestleMania debut, uh, if you will. Um, in ring debut. Uh, let's just leave it at WrestleMania. I'm trying to think if she did. No, she hasn't done anything as far as in-ring uh, for television. So, yeah, this was her WrestleMania debut and her official in-ring debut. So, I mean, she hit it off on all cylinders. Now, I'm not going to jump out there unlike some people and go, Oh, man, 
Oh, man. Yeah, women better watch out, man. Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair. And y'all better watch out. Bianca Bella, y'all better watch out. Because, ooh, we. Jay Cargill you're coming for your ass. No, 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 no. Pump the brakes. The jury is still out on Jay Cargill. She passed the test tonight, but the bigger tests lie ahead. We need to see how she does when it comes to taking bumps, right? I mean, because she most of her most of her repertoire that we saw go down tonight was mainly on offense, pure offense. It was ninety five percent offense, maybe five percent defense. So the bigger story going forward with Jay Cargill is okay. How are you at taking bumps? And okay, let's see how you are in singles matches. Yeah, this is great that you're involved in this tag match. But let's see how you roll in a singles match. Let's see how you roll when it's a match that is going to last a little bit longer than this time that you had at WrestleMania. Okay, let's see how you are when you got to deal with more competent in ring technician opponents such as Natalia, right? Because at some point, that's going to be the stepping stone. That's going to be the measuring stick, right? Okay, if you can hold your own against Natty, then okay, yeah, you know what? You all right, right? We, we've seen that happen time and time again. So that's going to be the real story uh, developing with Jay Cargill. So look out for that. But for tonight, as far as, okay, you're off to a decent start. Okay. That's what's up. Yeah. Yeah. She, she definitely did. She definitely did. All right. Uh, for what it was worth here. Uh, intercontinental championship Gunther defending against Sammy Zayn and folks, we got ourselves a new intercontinental champion and Sammy Zayn 15 minutes. Getting the job done with a halua kick after he did a generico brain buster of Gunther onto the top turnbuckle crashing Gunther on his way down. Great stuff, man. I love this match. This literally was screaming Rocky Four, and I appreciated the hell out of Michael Cole in the gang mentioning Rocky Four and all that. Uh, I know Sami Zayn's wife was there at ringside. Shout out to Trez. Trez was going, uh, she was going Adrian because she was posting the Adrian gift to represent Sami Zayn's wife. I'm like thinking, nah, man, she's about to be <laughs> Apollo Creed's wife in a minute uh, and everything. Uh, you know what? Sami Zayn as the, ch- I'm conflicted on that. I, I really am conflicted on that because on the one hand, I'm looking at what Gunther was doing, and there's still that part of me that says, yo, Gunther, Chad Gable, let's run that bad boy back. Let's run it back for the Intercontinental Championship. Or continue to build up Gunther and let some young upcoming guy dethrone him. Maybe a Carmelo Hayes. Just saying. But then I flip the script and I look at Sami Zayn and I go, well, you know, not for nothing, but ever since things had cooled off with the bloodline and all that, ever since Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn had been split apart, which, by the way, nice nod to see Kevin Owens pretty much in the gorilla position, hyping Sami Zayn up, getting him ready for that match and everything, because Chad Gable had decided, look, I've done everything I can to train you. Now you got to go out there, get the job done, right? It was kind of funny, too, because the way Sammy was looking at Chad, it was almost kind of a Rocky, uh, you know, and, and Mick moment, right? You know, like, nah, you know, you know how to take care of your business. Go handle it already, right? Like, I'll be out here in the back chilling, waiting for you to come back, give me the good news, right? But uh, it was nice to see Kevin Owens there, you know, Hyping him up, being there for his brother and all that. I, I loved it. It was good stuff. But I look at Sami Zayn and think about that long drought. We all could be in agreement. It was a a drought that this guy was in. And 
did some of us in the wrestling community were some of us a little bit harsh when we saw Sami Zayn initially become the number one contender to take on Gunther at WrestleMania. I, I, I would say so. Now, I know I wasn't as harsh as some folks out there uh, in, in the community, but I definitely felt kind of uh, not what I was expecting, right? And I would imagine Sami Zayn saw some of those reactions and was without a doubt hurt over that and everything, right? But, hey, look, it, it is what it is. Okay, show must go on and everything. Sami Zayn, as the Intercontinental Champion, as the one to dethrone Gunther and all that, you know what? I'm all fine for it. I'm all fine for it. I like the story that was told. Gunther kept looking past Sami Zayn. He looked at Sami Zayn in a way where, you know what, you're beneath me. Like, you're no different than any other, right? He underestimated him. That's it in a nutshell. He underestimated him. And he finally paid for it uh, when it's all said and done. No, I like the story that was uh, told out leading into this match. I thought the two of these guys, when I look at the WrestleMania card for night one in general, I felt that this was one of the best matches of the night. Not saying that just to be throwing it out there, but I thought these guys went out there. I felt they hit it out of the park. This was one of my favorite matches of the night. Good stuff from both of these guys. Uh, I loved it. I loved it. I'm just trying to think like a little bit more of what I might want to say um, in regards to this match. Um... Man, a whole lot of drama. I, I just love the fact that there was just so much drama going on. Sami Zayn's wife being at ringside, talking trash to Gunther. Gunther's coming over there, talking hot game to her, and she ain't having none of it. I mean, she's throwing it right back at him. I mean, she was ready for all the smoke. She was ready for all the smoke. She did not back down. For anything, man. I loved it. I loved it. This was good stuff right here. Good stuff right here. Where does Gunther go from here? Does Gunther try to put himself in a position where he goes for an automatic rematch? Or, like, what exactly happens here? Uh, or does he set his eyes for World Heavyweight Championship? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things play out because remember money in the bank, not that far away. We could potentially be looking at the next money in the bank briefcase winner and Gunther time will tell. I know some people are eyeballing ricochet talking about the role that he's been on and everything, but Gunther is definitely somebody. If you're looking down the road to that money in the bank, premium live event you definitely you'd be a fool to not have Gunther be at the very top of your list to potentially win it uh you, you know if in fact he is involved in it you'd be a fool not to select him as one of the final two that could win that damn thing so we'll see how everything plays out for Gunther in the near future there uh, what else do we say about The Rock taking on, uh, The Rock taking on Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes there with his tag partner in, uh, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns and The Rock taking on Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. You know, what else do we say in regards to that? Um, I don't think there's anything else in addition. I, I mean, we hit up all the points, right? I mean, for those of you that's just now tuning in, like we opened up the show talking about that match. I'm just wondering if there's anything in addition. Well, one thing, one thing in addition. And that's the fact that anytime you have Seth Rollins involved in a premium live match, you know it's going to be a damn good one. You know, for the most part, you're going to have a good time. You definitely know you're going to be entertained. You know that it's going to be something that's usually memorable. And that was definitely the case this go round. And with the bloodlines victory over Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins, setting up what is going to be a bloodlines rules match 
There's going to be so much goddamn chaos. There's going to be so much constant interference. But this could end up backfiring for the bloodline. That's the beautiful part about this. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the hell is going to happen uh, with night two there. Because <laughs> if this goes down the way I'm picturing it, we are going to be here in less than 24 hours and we're going to be going Yo, dude, that's freaking badass. I can't believe, right? I have a feeling there's going to be a whole bunch of cameos that's going to be coming from out of nowhere. And then the other thing that we got to think about, too, look at how much damage was done to Seth Rollins. Like, if you're following the story arc and all that, look at how much damage was done to Seth Rollins in this match. Drew McIntyre just licking his chops like, yeah, thanks, bud. Thank you. Really, thank you. You're helping me out a great ton. You're making my job so much easier. Thank you so much, right? So that puts even more emphasis. And then what about CM Punk on commentating? I I mean, he's going to be offering commentary during that match. How much of a factor is he going to play uh, in that one, right? There's like a whole lot of interesting drama that's just all intertwined there. Uh, going in the night too so i'm looking forward to seeing how that plays out we're going to get to the polling results in just a hot little bit here but i would say looking at night one of wrestlemania scale of one to ten i one to ten one being crap ten being awesome sauce I would probably give this a. Mm, I'd probably give this a seven and a half, maybe an eight. But for now, I'm gonna stay at a seven and a half. I don't think I can go any any higher, right? Rock really delivered. I would have to say, as far as most surprising thing from this premium live event. The Rock showed up. This was not what I was expecting out of The Rock. And I think anybody that has been a Rock fan for a long time, remember all of his work from, you know, X amount of years that he was involved with the WWE. You know, you're looking at what he did tonight and you're going, yo, this was, not only was he good, you know, but the man, you could make an argument that, yo, Rock, if he wanted to, he could go out there on a full-time schedule and kick ass. I, I mean, this was vintage, vintage rock. I, I loved what I was seeing. Uh, better than I was envisioning. Uh, the execution of it and, and all, I would look at that as a, a really good high mark. Yeah, definitely a really good high mark there. Mm, yeah. They opened up pretty strong and everything. That middle part was a bit of a dud. Crowd wasn't really that into it. That was kind of sad. So, yeah, you definitely had a decline there throughout the show. Especially when you got to the Usos facing one another. But you went out on such a really good, strong note, especially having The Rock come out there with that people's championship belt and all that. Yeah, I would stay at a seven and a half out of 10. Low point, high point of the night. Uh, trying to think, low point, high point. Well, I kind of just gave you the high point and talking about the rock, right? Low point... Ah, uh, I'm just going back looking. Low point, Little Wayne. <laughs> low point, low point, Little Wayne. Now, some would say, well, wait a minute. What about the woman that has sung the national anthem there? Uh, see, uh, no, you can hear the talent, though. You can hear the talent. I don't know what was going on with Lil Wayne, though. No. Lil Wayne was the low point 
uh, for me. Favorite match, least favorite match. Sami Zayn, Gunther, favorite match. I got to give an honorable mention to the tag team main event match as well. Got to give an honorable mention to them. Least favorite match. Mm. I'm looking at the card. Least favorite match. Can't believe I'm saying this, but my least favorite match, Jimmy and Jey Uso. I don't like saying that, but yeah. So when you break it down, put it as far as a letter grade, I'm going to go with go with a B minus, maybe a C plus, B minus, B minus for now. Put a little asterisk by it. Give it a B minus, right? All right, let's see what you guys had to say in the poll. If you haven't voted yet, go on youtube.com forward slash the RCWR show. Cash your vote that way. Or you can hop on X slash formerly known as Twitter at the RCWR show and cash your vote that way. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, yeah, give me that. Oh, yeah, give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. I like that. Give me that. All right, let's see. I'm looking at X first. Thank you to everybody that had cast or vote via X, by the way. Shout out to the 15 plus folks that's watching the stream via X, by the way. Hey there. Hey, guys. Uh, let's see here. We've got four options for you guys coming in at 7%. Terrible show. 24%. Average show. 29% fantastic show. Top dog right now at 40% good show. All right. Uh, let's see what's going on with you guys over on YouTube. I'm seeing 30. Hang on. 18% of you are saying awesome show. 36% of you felt it was a average show and top dog right now, 45% great show. Appreciate you guys that had cast your vote. Hang on. I'm just refreshing, making sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're good. We're good. Should we maybe poke our head into the cage match database? And uh, read just a couple of reviews. I, I, I kind of like poking my head and, and just reading like the most critical. Usually we do that. Let's see what we got going on here, right? WrestleMania night one. Let's see if we can find that. I'm looking for you guys. And yes, I see it. Let's, let's read about three, maybe four, all right? Three or four. So right now I'm seeing a overall rating of 6.32 out of 10. You heard me right. Let's look at the ratings here. I'm going to go with the most critical, most positive, and the in-between. Assuming that it's not a freaking thesis, right? I, I mean, some of these people, the way they write it up, it's a freaking essay in this damn thing. All right, so let's see. I'm looking, I'm looking. I see a high number. Oh, wow, I didn't see that one coming. Somebody actually said a 9 out of 10. That's the highest one, too. All right, let's go with that one. Let's read that one first. Let's kick it off with that one. You guys can sound off what you think about this. Okay. Bring back that 9.0. Where's that 9.0? Here it is. From Paul 04. Not as great as the last two Night One Manias. I would agree with that. And not better than Stand and Deliver earlier. I did not watch Stand and Deliver. Um, if I'm up for it, I'll watch it tonight or maybe sometime um, later today. But I was entertained throughout the whole match. I liked every match, and the only bad match was the Uso versus Uso. I, I would not argue with you on that one. The first two matches were really good, in my opinion, and the main event 
was really great fun. And Sammy versus Gunther, it's what wrestling is all about. Yeah, yeah, I have, you guys, you all good with that? I have no issues uh, with what he said. Let's look at the most critical. Most critical goes to Malik Tos, who gave it a four. Actually, correction, Wilson VP. Wilson VP gave a one out of ten. Weak stage setting. You know, the stage setting, it reminded me a lot of DX, so to speak. Um, it had a DX vibe to it, which, by the way, I, I loved how Triple H had came out there. You know, because you know, everybody's now saying, hey, it's the Triple H era and, and, and all of that. And they had a lot of green going on with that main stage area. Now, if you wanted to make an argument to Wilson's point, you know, as far as, yo, the stage, it was just kind of ordinary. There really wasn't anything spectacular about. I would, you know what? I would give it to Wilson. I won't say, what did he say? Weak stage setting. I would say it was a little weak. Like when you think about previous WrestleMania stages, I mean, we have seen some top-notch, whoa, you know, like, damn, this looks like, man, what are they going to do for next year? Because I know that's usually one of the one of the running gags, running gimmicks with these WrestleManias is, yo, how are they going to top what they did with the stage and all that, you know, for this WrestleMania? How are they going to top next year? And this go-round, yeah, it, it, it was a little weak. I would definitely say that. Yeah, Wilson, you're on point with that. Weak main event that took away from the rest of the matches and not even one very good match at the first night. Really? Even if we had Gunther versus Sane. I don't agree with that. The women's title had a good ending, but not a good start. Yeah, I mean, anybody that's feeling a certain way in regards to Rhea Ripley taking on Becky Lynch, I mean, again, in case you missed it or you haven't watched it yet, Becky Lynch was running with a 104-degree fever, and she was dealing with strep throat. She had all that going into her match against Rhea Ripley. So when it's all said and done, she was not at 100%. Uh, you know, knowing that because context is everything. I mean, I know there's some people that feel, OK, well, if you're going to go out there, you're going to put on your costume, you're going to lace up the boots and all that. You're going to tape it up and you're going to go and, and perform. OK, well, then I'm expecting the best. Like I've been watching your career. Right. I'm expecting this certain level to come from you and anything less than that. Well, you know, it's a disappointment. You know, I, I get that and everything, right? So you can make that argument. Well, she laced them up, so yeah. yeah. But then, you know, there's that other part that can definitely sympathize and empathize that, okay, this person's not at 100%, and yet they still were able to. I'd like to see somebody go out there with a fever that high and on top of that dealing with strep throat and somehow be able to function whether it's in the workplace or you name the setting and yeah i mean was the little was the first little bit of the match like when it was opening up was it a bit off yeah it was definitely a little bit off and i would be i'd like to think that becky was just trying to get her bearings together i'm not making excuses for her i mean i'm sure that the next go round that she's able to do some media She'll shed a lot more light into what was going on with her and all that. And I, I think that we'll have even more respect because I, I think that's just the tipping of the iceberg as far as what all was going on with her and everything. Anyway, let's see what else he's uh, saying in this one. The tag ladder match was way, way too short. I felt the timing of that was great. That was fine. The SmackDown title was taken too soon that the match didn't even enter mid-stage. Uh, the SmackDown title was gone, uh, but the spots of Choppa and JD were good. 
The Lucha Tag match was nothing special and nothing too good. Uh, but it was bad that Kelsey came out to help Ray beat Escobar and Dominic. Eh, Uso's match was terrible. I wouldn't say terrible. It was just... Eh, eh. Can't tell a story and dull movesets. Women's three versus three was all normal. But Belair and the Kabuki Warriors tried to carry... There's nothing wrong with that. They're they're supposed to. They're essentially the in-ring veterans. You look at all the women that participated in that three-on-three, all respectfully veterans, but Dakota Kai, a bit injury-prone, still got to make sure that she's taking it easy and all that. Jay Cargill, still very wet behind the ears, got to do everything you can to protect those two women particularly. No, didn't have a problem with that three-on-three whatsoever. Uh, let's see. I see match was below expectation. Is this Dave Meltzer? Um, Jesus Christ. Anyway, should have pulled a better match. Okay. He's just grumpy, 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 grumpy. Now let's, let's keep right on going here. I don't know. It's like one out of 10. I don't know about that. So let's keep it rocking and rolling. Let's find somebody that's in the middle of the road, so to speak here. Let's see, middle of the row. We read a most positive, and then we read a most critical. Let's get somebody that's in the middle. Sir Bajaz, 7 out of 10. Main event was awesome. Other than that, the whole card was very mid. I would agree with that. It wasn't bad by any means. I just expected a bit more. I feel like they really went all in with the main event. Uh, and barely cared about the undercard. You could make that argument. Yeah, yeah. You could make that argument. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Let's uh, let's do two more. Ye, I watch wrestling. Eight out of ten. Now this show had a pretty nice feel to me. Opened with two very very good matches, and then I guess the middle of the show was a little bit slow and underwhelming, but then they absolutely hit it out of the park with the final two matches. I can confidently say after watching this, I'm excited for night two, mainly because the beautiful story that was just told in the main event of night one. It all leads to one thing, and that's Cody finishing the story. This show has been getting a lot of crap online, but I know for sure I enjoyed myself the whole time tonight. All right. Let's read two more. Keep it short and sweet. Because I'm seeing a lot of essays in here, man. Like, good God almighty. Oof, especially by uh, Kavlar. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. This looks like it could potentially, like, if you were to transfer it to Microsoft Word, this looks like it would be a page and a half. (laughs) Ain't nobody got time for that, man. Ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, what is this? Arc 10. 3 out of 10. Ultimately, this rating feels a little harsh. Since Zayn and Gunther had one of my favorite matches of the year. But I feel so sad after it was over. Uso versus Uso and the unbearable main event are the two worst matches I've ever seen at this show. The other matches I was looking forward to were either too short, had honk, wonky finishes, or felt a little off. Sammy winning was one of my favorite Mania moments ever, but the vibes were just wrong, and the main event poisoned my excitement for tomorrow night's main event. Feels like a waste of a great build. Yeah, they, I think they kind of, I, I think you're taking it a little too hard. Quote my favorite Genesis song. You're taking it all too hard. You're taking it all too hard. All right, let's uh, check out one more. Let's see. God, diatribes. Who, who has time to write all this? Jesus Christ. Everything else is like a freaking essay, man. Let me refresh one more time. God. 
essay, essay after essay after essay. Jesus. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm not reading that, no. I'm just double checking one more time here. See if I can find something short. Yeah, yeah. Everything else is unfortunately. Ah, I opened up something here. Hang on. I didn't mean to open that. I didn't mean to open that. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hang on, guys. I got to close that. I can't close it. Well, that's just great. Hang on, guys. Um, This might interfere with the program. Hang on. I want to close that. No, close it. Close it. No, close. Uh, Hawk smash. Oh, fuck me sideways. Oh, man, that sucks. Well, hopefully, like, no weird reboot happens here because I accidentally opened up uh, NVIDIA and it is updating, apparently. So that might interfere with the stream. If we happen to get cut off, just know we're going to be back for WrestleMania night two. And hang on here. Are we good? Yes, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. Because we were getting ready to wrap up um, anyway. So once again, looking at the polling results here. See how you guys had did. Before we get ready to clock out. All right, so the final tally. Of course, you guys that's going to be watching this on demand and on the downloads, you can keep on sounding off. Let your voice be heard. But the final tally as it's looking right now over on X, 7% said terrible show. Wonder if that's our cage match.net people. 23% average show. 30% fantastic show. 39% good show. Meanwhile, over on the YouTube channel, 18% awesome show. 36% average show. And 45% said. Great show. Appreciate everybody that had cast their votes. If you haven't voted, keep it rocking. Keep it coming along. I think we did pretty good, man. We did about a hour and 27 minutes, give or take. I was looking at the wrong counter meter, man. Um, we're going to be back Sunday night. WrestleMania 40, night two. I am looking fantastic. Just, uh, ah, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fantastic. I'm looking forward to it. Should be an awesome night. So, y'all, rest up, and I will see you back here. Meantime, be kind, rewind. Check out previous episodes you might have missed on demand and on the downloads, wherever you get your podcast. If you're going to be looking for the audio version of this, give me about 30 minutes. I should have this be uploaded. First dibs, go to Spreaker. Uh, if you enjoyed yourself, yo, spread the word, interact, share with me your thoughts about WrestleMania Night 1, support the content, definitely up on the YouTube channel, uh, hit the likes, all that good stuff. It helps out a, a great ton. Uh, if you want to go the extra mile, support the show, uh, feel free to look up our Spreaker feed uh, where you can now support the show for $8 a month. If you just want to support the show, that's your way to do it. Uh, we're still ironing out the kinks as far as what exclusive content we're going to have be uh, available through that method. But if you want to show your support, you can definitely go over there and drop a little something in the bucket. Know what I'm saying? Reverend Sanders is always taking uh, 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 numerations, dollar dollar bills, whether it's the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh. It don't matter. Reverend Sanders is always collecting. Appreciate you guys as always. I'll see you all for WrestleMania night two. Be safe. Be kind to one another. Take care, y'all. Peace.